What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Now, um, I guess we should start with uh, your health stuff and, and how you've been eating, because I'm sure people want to know if you've been sticking to your diet. Okay. Well, I took your advice and I decided that I was going to go into this endeavor slowly, allowing myself one chicken per week Mm -hmm. and one beef per week. So that's what I've been doing. I've been modifying cheese, not too much. Um, No milk, no ice cream this week. Not that I'm swearing it off. I'm going to wean off of that as well. So I'm putting my toes in the water and I'm using that as a way to start inspiring the kids to do the same because when I tried to just jump in the water, you guys all looked at me like it was too radical. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just trying to say, all right, Logan, look at how I'm eating today. And do you want to join me? You want to do this together? You want to be a team? And he's like, yeah, mom. So so that seems to be working. So I'm going to see what my progression is like and what I can tolerate and how difficult it is to depart from the way that we used to eat. But just like you said before, I think it's going to be a slow thing. Now, have you missed any of the foods that you usually eat? Not yet, because I realized that a lot of things that I ate before We're okay as far as, you know, parting from meats and whatnot. Like I'll have a lot of pasta, just not necessarily having it with chicken. So earlier today I had penne vodka. Usually I would have it with chicken. Today I just had penne vodka, but I had a cheese tortellini soup earlier today before that meal. So you still you still messing with cheese? I just said that. No, because I mean, last time, last episode, you said cheese looked like snot. So no, you, I said it looked like pus, actually. Oh, pus, and you, I didn't say it looked like it. I said that that's how they referred to it in the documentary. So I thought that maybe because you didn't eat cheese, you stopped eating cheese that day. So I thought that you would continue with it. Well, this cheese, you don't really see it and you barely taste it. It's wrapped in a tortellini and it's in the soup. So I didn't have to internalize too badly that I was eating cheese. And I think also when I had that reaction, it was tomato and mozzarella. And when you eat tomato and mozzarella, it's sliced mozzarella, which is a little wet. And it was just going too hand in hand with the comparison. So it turned me off mentally. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm going to take my time. Okay. All right. That, that, that's, that sounds more reasonable than just a, a cold turkey give up. I mean, you know, it may lead to that point and it may not. We're going to see. Okay. Now, also, people wanted to know about um, last week we had a, a, con- a conversation about uh, Logan's teacher. Yes. And, and where do we leave off with that? Oh, as an update. So I've we've had a great result to that situation. The principal and I have been in contact um, for several days considering different ways to handle it. Um, He was absent from school for another day. He had a family emergency. And when he returned, he spoke to some of the children that may have been within earshot of the situation. Okay. That time that he spoke to them, it was to no avail. And I understand that nobody wants to be a whistleblower to say it wasn't this person. It was that person or it was that person. It wasn't this person. So they all pretty much said, we don't know. You know, I don't know. So they didn't vindicate Logan. They didn't crucify Logan. They just said, I don't know. Um, Something must have happened today in school, however, because Logan came home and told me that the teacher asked him and the other boy that was given detention to stay after class. And they both did after the rest of the children left. And the teacher instructed the other boy to apologize to Logan for his detention, which sounds crazy to me that boy got in trouble he did his well he didn't get a detention but he did get his name on the board so what was his apology and I didn't have a chance to tell you this because you just got in but now you're hearing it with everybody else what could that apology have meant What was the purpose of the other boy apologizing to Logan? The other boy didn't lie on Logan. The other boy didn't throw Logan under the bus. The boy made a noise. 
and he got in trouble for it. So I don't understand why he would have had to have apologized for Logan. It almost seems as though it comes from a place where the teacher is saying, you put me in a position to punish somebody unjustly. And now I need you to apologize to him for me because I can't apologize to him myself. Well, what do you think? That's what I think. I think that that ego is so strong that she had to turn to another 13 year old to make her apology for her. Yeah. It sounds very cowardly to me. So where do you go from here? Well, I told Logan, I said that is her indirect way of letting you know that she made a mistake. If she didn't make a mistake, there would be no reason for her to ask the other boy to apologize to you. I'm mad that the other boy actually apologized to Logan. That boy had no reason to have to apologize to Logan whatsoever. It sounds utterly ridiculous. And I think that she may have done that because in her warped mind, she must have thought that that would have given us some level of satisfaction and we would back off because it's been a thing. Now, mind you, this was a noise in class. This wasn't a fight. Nobody cursed out a teacher. There was, I mean, on, on the scale, this is about a three. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't an awful offense. It's something right. that kids do. Kids make noises. Kids right, talk right, in right. class. Kids pass notes. So it wasn't horrible. But the way that it was handled is what compiled the mess. That's what made it so dirty. That's what made it so ugly. That's what, why we had to make so many phone calls and be so involved because of the way that it was handled. And in life, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people can relate. It's not always the initial problem that carries the weight. It's the way that people go about handling things Correct. that can make it go so left and make it look so ugly. So in addition to that... The principal offered, and I thought that this was great on his part. And again, I, I really like him. He's a very he's a very nice man. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that he was trying to do whatever he could to make the situation right. Right. And to accommodate us and what our takeaway would be. And he said to me, probably verbatim, you know, Mrs. Casey, what can we do so that we can move on from this with everybody being satisfied? You know, what would it take to make you happy? And I said, well, let me talk to Logan. I did tell him that I would like an apology from the teacher if it was found that she was wrong. They really couldn't get to the bottom of that. So we couldn't really get an apology. But he said, well, how do you feel about Logan being taken being taken out of her classroom mm -hmm. you know we can switch his class and put him in another Spanish class and it would rearrange his schedule he'll still have all the same teachers with the exception of that teacher it'll just be in a different order throughout the day right so I'm going to talk to Logan this was just today so I'm going to talk to Logan about that and we're going to see what Logan wants to do now where does this leave off with the teacher now with the teacher yeah I think this is where it ends because the principal isn't able to get to the root of it. So you're satisfied with the teacher making the other boy apologize? Um, I'm not satisfied with it per se, but I think that it's something. It could have ended with no apology whatsoever. My whole thing was if it was proven that Logan did not do this, then what will be your course of action? And she said, I will not apologize to Logan. But from their perspective, you and I know what the truth is. Logan knows what the truth is. And I'm sure the other students know what the truth is. But from his perspective, he cannot get to the bottom of it because nobody is going to say anything. Do you see what I mean? Right. I mean, I, I feel like um, she should apologize anyway for giving him a detention for something that she did not see. See, I feel like regardless, she has to apologize. I mean, she's definitely going to hear a word from me mm -hmm. because what she did was cowardly and, and she told you she wasn't going to apologize. And in her mind, that's what she did. She wasn't going to apologize, even if she was wrong. 
and by using the other boy to make him apologize, it's kind of like all right, a cop well, out. Uh, kind of like I'm appeased the parents, and I'm gonna feel good because I still didn't apologize. I'm gonna show them, but that's not right. You know what that that situation is not right, and that's a cowardly move. And she's gonna hear from me, and I'm gonna tell her exactly how I feel. I'm gonna tell her that I don't think it was right that you pick my son and not even hearing what he did. You know, I, I'm gonna tell her that you know I, I want to know what sound was made that you knew it was my son because I'm I'm pretty curious about that you have to tell me what sound it was you know what sound was correlated or related to my son that you just knew it was my son i want to know what was it what you tell me was it a yo was it a right uh, uh, we know what what kind of sound was that like you just can't say okay this boy apologizes and you appease me and everything is cool and everything's okay because at the end of the day i don't i don't give a fuck about your apology your apology and and how you did it means nothing but you admitting that you were wrong is everything. And since you don't want to admit that you were wrong, I'm going to continue to put the pressure on you and, and make you feel awkward and uncomfortable every time you see me and every time I walk in that school because my son feels awkward and uncomfortable every time he walks in that classroom. Yeah, I agree. I think at this point, it would be a good idea for you to speak to the principal first. You know, no, I'm going to go talk to her first because I, I, I think me and her need to have a heart to heart first. And let her understand where I'm coming from, because this is I'm not polite. I'm not nice. I'm not one of those people that are just like, okay, all right. I I want her to know that I'm rude and nasty. You're not rude and nasty. When I you're painting yourself wrong. You're not when I need to be. I am. And in this situation, I will be in this situation. I will be exactly what I think. I think she did it because my child was black. That's honestly how I feel. That's honestly what my gut tells me. And that's honestly what I what I'm gonna go with. Now, if she can prove to me that's that that's not the reason, then I'll feel differently. But she has to prove to me that that's not the reason why she picked on my son. Why did you pick on my son? Because there's no reason to pick on my son. You didn't hear any noises. You know, your 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 back was a uh, you know. Well, she facing did the hear kids. a noise. Well, you you didn't know it was. But you didn't. You know who right, made the noise? Right. You just assumed it was my son. And what 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 would give you that assumption? So she's gonna have to tell me what that is. So then, would you like for me to call a meeting? No, I'll call her myself. Uh, I might just pop up on class one on one day and just come to the school and, and see her and, and ask her a question you myself. You can't just go to class. Why can't I? So let me ask you a question. Yes. You think that you can go to school and you can ask for the schedule and they're going to tell you what class the teacher is teaching and no. where it is and walk you there kindly so you can bust into the class? No, and, no. Rashawn, Not at all. On. But the teacher has to walk to her vehicle. And if I'm picking up Rashawn, my son, you sa- you, see, and, and if the Rashawn, same, at the same time I'm picking up my son, I'm just I have a, I just have a question. I'm not gonna, Rashawn, you sound crazy. And she doesn't sound crazy. Why are you looking that way? Why aren't you looking me in the eye? I'm just asking you. She doesn't sound crazy. She sounds crazy, but okay. you you want to match her crazy? Is that what we're trying to do? Why not? Sometimes you you got to match crazy with crazy Rashawn, for people to you understand. Sound, you sound ridiculous. Well, I just want to have a conversation. I understand that you're upset, but you sound ridiculous. Right now, you well, sound ridiculous. Somebody's picking on my son. I, I think I have the right to sound a little ridiculous. Well, I think that if you would like to speak with her, we're going to go about it the right way. We call a meeting. Okay, then we can do that. Yes, we call a meeting. Oh. I know you're upset, but you can't be irrational because you're upset. Um... That's what you and I hear think. it all in your voice. If she's irrational, I can be irrational. Right. You gave her an opportunity to do what's right. She didn't do what's right. She's a grown adult. She's not a child. I just she can't knows believe she that she wrong. had the other boy apologize to Logan. What a cop out. And if I and and I'm I'm going to tell the other boy's parents because I don't think that's right either. You don't make my mm. son apologize to, to something that he didn't do. He's apologizing he to another kid. Because of your mess beca- up? Because of something that he did that had nothing to do with the other kid. No, the way... And you, then he's instructed by the teacher to apologize? The way you're even teaching the youth is is absolutely positively wrong. To not take responsibility Right, that's, what that's absolutely do. wrong. And, and if she has kids and she raises her kids like that, that's fucked up. And, you know, I have to say that's one thing that we do in our house, even as parents... Sometimes when we make mistakes as parents, 
you know, whether it be losing our temper or, you know, speaking too soon or, you know, having a bad day and in some way taking it out on our children, we make it our business to apologize, right? to acknowledge it and apologize and make the situation right. Correct. I, you know, and I don't think that um, in life people always take advantage of that idea. Absolutely. I don't think people really realize how important it is to not leave residue behind when it comes to issues that you go through and situations that you experience with other people. Absolutely. It's so important to address whatever it is mm-hmm. and acknowledge what you what you did, accept it and apologize. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, this weekend, or this week, I should say, we got a lot of emails. Mm-hmm. We haven't been answering emails recently because we just pretty much had a, a bunch of stories. We answered one last week. Right. That pulled rank out this B. Uh-huh. But <laughs> let's get to some more. Now, uh, this is from Mike. Mike is saying, letting the past be the past. Good day, envy and gear. Wanted to start by saying I enjoy your podcast. You discuss very related topics. Well related to me, which is the initial draw. Envy really puts himself out there, which I respect. Many males in our community would not be as open as open and honest as you are. I don't know if that's a good thing sometimes, Mike. Uh, for whatever reason, this is perceived as being weak. But the vulnerability and honesty you display is what allowed me to relate to where you're coming from on your stances, thus retaining my interest. Mm-hmm. Not sure how much of my background you like to know, but I'll give you a brief overview. I'm a male, older, engaged to a female Latina, several years younger. We are both mature adults and with that said, have been in prior relationships prior to our meeting six years ago. I wouldn't describe myself as a possessive person, but what I do have is a flaw not allowing the past to stay in the past. My memory just won't allow me to. Midway through our relationship, I discovered an email she had saved. It was from an ex and it was screenshots of a conversation they had. A very inappropriate one at about feelings towards one another. The chemistry they had, they had sexually. How if they were to meet up at the time, how they couldn't help but to have relations due to the chemistry. And the big kicker, her saying she would end our relationship to be with him. Oh, wow. Mind you, this was all discovered shortly after we moved in together. I discovered this back and forth had been going on for about two weeks where he'd call her during the day while she was at work. And she slide out of her office to take his calls and talk. They even text and joked about it. This was not only the incident in the early stages of our relationship. Dude would call and text. At first, I paid a little mind, but then it got worse. Dude questioned her. Uh, dude questioned her the lame BS of what you can't have friends. <laughs> As a male, knowing what that means and the intentions and statements of the nature subliminally meaning, I asked, well, demanded she change her number. Though I had random occasions where someone would, from my past would reach out to me either knowing or not that I was in a relationship and I'd just respond or allow my fiance to answer. Um, I know it's unfair and if I've forgiven her, my question is how do I resolve that internally? Again, it's in my mind even though I may never verbally say it is. There's a long history of that that sat in between my head, this dude from the past a current deadbeat baby daddy that I could go on to great lengths about, but I'll save that for another day for you. Maybe I know it may not be a relatable topic as you two have been together since you were essentially kids, as it's new to me as well. Any input would be greatly appreciated. I'm listening to your podcast from the, and then it just stops. So what do you think? Um, I don't think that it's out of line that he's having these feelings. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm not. I, I, am I missing something? How did he come about the um, the emails or the screenshots? Was he snooping? Uh, he didn't say how he seen it. OK, well, if he was snooping, I don't necessarily want to say that I'm in agreement with that. But nonetheless, he found what he found. And in what he found were things that were inappropriate, that someone that's in a relationship shouldn't be saying to an ex so i understand why he's upset and why it's difficult for him to let go i don't think i'd be able to let that go we're in a relationship and we're supposed to care about each other 
I'm assuming that they're in love. They moved in together. So it seems as though they're planning a future. And here she is with an ex, you know, reminiscing about the chemistry and basically saying, well, if I were in a situation where I ran into you, basically, I wouldn't be able to keep my hands off of you. And, you know, I would, what did she say? Leave my present boyfriend? Yes. Or, mm-hmm. Okay. Leave my present boyfriend or, you know, have something with you on the side while I'm with, you know, whichever way. She's articulating that she would choose her ex over her present boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So if he reads that, how is he supposed to feel? Slighted. Like number two. Right. As though what? She's just settling for him when she'd rather be with her ex. Yeah, I'd be upset. I understand. Yeah, but it gets to a point if you're going to forgive and you're going to move on. Then Who he said have, that he forgave? or well, that He, he said this he, was early in a relationship and he said it keeps coming back. That's I didn't the hear problem. anything about an apology. That was the whole thing. He said that. Um, Did I miss see. something? I didn't hear him mention that she apologized. He said this was or, early in a relationship. Mm-hmm. He said. Uh, I didn't hear we got over six it. Six years ago. Um. I just heard he read it and now it's six years later or sometime later. Yeah, but um, let me see if if I could see that he apologized. Uh, I didn't hear the word apology. Could be wrong, but I don't think I did. Mm. He just said, uh, me having a memory, I have found it difficult erasing these incidents from my mind. Right. Sure enough, when we have a disagreement, I unfairly bring these events back up. So they've had a conversation about it before. And it's my whole thing is if you had a conversation before and it's all out in the window, either you let it go or you don't like you can't continue to, in my opinion, you can't continue to beef over something that we've had a conversation about. Like either you you say, I'm going to let it go and continue build on this relationship or I'm not going to let it go. And I'm just going to continue to beef about it. Well, it all depends on what took place during that conversation. Do you understand? And he didn't give us that information. Right. So I don't know if. She took responsibility for what she said. I don't know if she explained herself. You know, it could have just been her caught in what wouldn't just be the moment, many moments communicating with her ex and thinking, oh, my, you know, my my new boyfriend or my current boyfriend is never going to hear about this or know about this. So no harm, no foul. I'm just going to be foul. You know, I mean... I don't I don't know how their conversation ended. So I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to their relationship if people well if she decides to say or they decide to okay, well, we spoke about it, we talked about it, we got it out of our system, it's out of our system. Now to bring it up every time that there's an argument or to bring it up every time there's a disagreement or to pressure her about it is it's not what's right. If if there's a problem or situation, y'all talk about it, y'all degree, y'all agree to let it go. You gotta let it go. Yeah, but you know what? With you, I think sometimes you act as though people are robots. And I think that you're very good with putting thoughts and feelings and emotions in a box and chucking it out the window on the highway and never revisiting those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. But I don't think that most people really work like that. Um, Sometimes it can be ideal in a situation to not have to deal with past emotions or past disappointments, past hurtful moments or hurtful things. But I don't think that that's how most people operate. But I think people need to operate like that if if that's the case. Because all it does is, is create a stress that because it's something that that's constantly on your mind. And and stress is one of the things, probably one of the things that causes the most everything with people, whether it's death, whether it's weight loss whether it's ulcers whether it's cancer it's something that that bothers you and it it doesn't give you that that freedom of mind and for Mm -hmm. me if if i try to live a stress-free life where whatever stresses me i try to get away from right you know whether it's a person whether it's a situation whether it's a feeling and and i don't want to deal with the stress you know, life is too short. People are dealing with worse things in this world than uh, something that I'm holding on to. People are dealing with cancer. You know, people are dealing with uh, uh, disease, with poverty, with, you know, so many different things. So if I don't have to deal with stress, then fuck it. I don't want to deal with the stress. And if we agree to say, you know what, this is where it is and this is where it's going to be. I don't want to go back to it. Why continue to go back to some shit? 
Okay. So you're talking about people who are going through far worse things, which of course that's true. Sometimes, you know, we always look to people that might be going through something worse than what we're going through. And it kind of makes you realize how small your issue is in comparison. But by the same token, you can't use that to discount someone's feelings and emotions because there are bigger things and worse things going on in this world. You can't use that to discount someone's thoughts and feelings. It's not discounting someone's thoughts or feelings, but if every time you get in an argument and they get in an argument with each other and he brings up the fact that this was the situation, he's not going to get her true feelings or anything anymore. It's going to get to a point where she's going to say, you know what? I don't want to argue because when I argue with this person, he brings this up every time. So let's not argue. And he's not going to get her her full capability and her who she really is because she's going to be walking on eggshells to not get into an argument because she doesn't want that same thing brought back up over and over again. Well, did he say that he constantly brings it back up or he that he, he's constantly thinking about it and he can't let go of it? No, he said he brings it back th- up and he knows it's unfair. Okay. I think that he's tormented by it. See, there's a difference between imagining a potential situation between the person that you're with and somebody else and seeing it for yourself, reading your actual words, reading that person's words back to you, imagining all of these recounts of what they're illustrating in their texts to one another. That can be very painful for a person. So I don't imagine that it would be easy for him to forget or to just let go. And it'd be one thing if he was reading an old email that, or an old text message or seeing old screenshots of something that took place before their relationship began. But what makes it close to him and hurtful to him is that these messages were being exchanged during the time that he was with her. So he's going to be especially sensitive to that. And that's going to tug on certain strings in his heart and be that much more hurtful towards him. So I get that. But with me understanding that, I also know that if he decided, regardless of how those conversations ended, if he decided to stay with her, despite that, then it is something that he's going to have to work on letting go. He's going to have to move on and figure out a way within himself to try to suppress those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Or maybe if he really loves her and he wants a future with her, which is what I'm assuming, he may actually need to see a therapist to handle that on his own. I don't know if it's the type of situation that he would have to bring her in on because it's, I think it's just a personal struggle. Right. But because he decided to continue their relationship, he's going to have to make that a thing of the past. But that's something that he has to do proactively, not because I'm discounting how he feels as a result of what he read. Right. Well, good luck to Mike. I, I, I just feel that Mike should, if he can't let go then he he has to move on. I mean, you can't put yourself in every time y'all get into an argument, you bring it up. I'm sure it it makes the relationship not as free. And I think that's what he has to do. I'd like to add one thing to that. Sure. Again, he didn't talk about his conversation with his girlfriend, but maybe they should revisit it one last time. And he can preface it by saying something along the lines of, I want to put this behind me because I want to move forward with you. So if he has any questions that he wants to ask, then he needs to ask there and then and ask for her honesty. And if they have this open, honest conversation about her thoughts and her feelings and, you know, was she actually being honest when she said that or was she saying that to just appear more sexy to him because it might have been a potential high at the moment? Do you know what I mean? I think that 
some honesty needs to be expressed during that conversation. And that in and of itself might serve as closure for him. Right. If he's open to hear what she has to say, because Mm -hmm. most times I think people formulate their own answers regardless. And no matter what they say, they already thinking, well, that's not what I've been thinking. If, if he's already drawn his own conclusions and he doesn't have an open mind, I don't think it even makes sense to do that. So hopefully he'll have an open mind and they can revisit that. Well, I, yeah, I say have one more conversation for closure. And then if you're satisfied at the end of that, put it behind you and move on. OK, good luck, Mike. Now, let's go to the next email. Um, It's from Anonymous. It says, I love my ex and I can't move on. Help. I want to be anonymous for this one. Thank you. Hey, Gia and Envy. To start off, I love you both in your podcast. I listen all the time. I even came out to your live podcast. But here's my story. I have an ex-boyfriend. We're not together because he cheated. We were together for two years, but it felt like a lifetime. He always reached out to me for holidays, birthdays, even after the breakup. We finally talked about the situation after some time. He had reached out and apologized and gave me the answers I needed. I forgave him and I was able to let go of something I had been angry about for a long time. Now we're friends right now, but here's my issue. I want to start dating again, but I just can't bring myself to give another person my time. Be intimate with or love someone else who I loved him or or else how I loved him. Excuse me. And I know it would hurt him if I did. I just don't know what I should do. Every time I even start talking to someone, I feel like I'm hurting him or cheating, but we're just we're just friends right now. I don't know why I feel like that or what I should do. Oh, and get this. He deals with someone right now. So that should be an even mm-hmm. better reason for me to move on and do me. By the way, I'm 19 and he's 20. He's the first boy I ever loved or was even with for that matter. I would love your advice. And if you could help, thanks in advance. Best anonymous. Well, first, I want to say what is screaming at me after hearing the end of that email is he's not worried about how you might feel by dating somebody else. So why are you? He's in another relationship. He's dealing with somebody else. So why are you treating him as though he's this delicate flower that's going to be crushed if he finds out that you're seeing someone else. I don't know if he said anything to lead you to believe that, but it may just be something that you believe and it may not be the case. It may be the case and maybe that's because he's somewhat possessive of someone and something that he cared about. And maybe he still does have feelings for you, but Mm -hmm. he's not holding himself to himself in hopes of, you know, rekindling a relationship with you one day. He's out there getting his life on. So for that to be the reason or one of the reasons why you're not moving on sounds unreasonable to me. Um, I I totally agree. I mean, Obviously, he's fine with moving on because he's seeing somebody else and not necessarily thinking about your feelings. So you shouldn't be thinking about him. And if it's bothering you like that, then maybe you should just cut ties and not speak to him. You shouldn't know how he's doing. You should want to know how he's feeling. He cheated on you. He moved on. You should move on. You should find somebody that you want to hang out with and enjoy. Maybe it might make you guys come back together, but I wouldn't necessarily think about his feelings because he's definitely not thinking about your feelings. So you continue to do you. And next time he calls you, you tell him straight up and down. Oh, I have a date tonight. I'm sorry. Let's talk later. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on another line with somebody. You know, you can't keep trying to protect his feelings when he's definitely not trying to protect yours. Well, they're in a good place, though. You know, it's not as though they have any contention towards each other. He apologized and she's good with the experience. So now it seems as though they're friends. And I don't necessarily think she may think that it's the case. But and I think that she probably it probably makes her feel good in a sense to think that he doesn't want to see her with somebody else. But I think it's more so that she doesn't want to see herself with somebody else because that was her first love, her first real boyfriend. Right. And I think that she's still in love with him. And that's really what this is. Right. Well, I think she needs to move on. He he, blatantly 
moved on, so she should move on. But I don't think that they need to lose touch or anything like that. I don't think that that's necessary. I think that she just has to make up her mind that she's going to move on. And listen, he may have been all sorts of wonderful, but to be honest with you, there's a lot of boys out there that are all sorts of wonderful. Right. Um, you know, people are unique and they have their own special sauce and whatnot. So I'm not going to say that you're going to find a carbon copy of him that made you feel exactly the way that he did. But I'm pretty sure that you'll find somebody. I mean, you're 19. I'm sure that you will find somebody that is going to make you feel special and float your boat. Right. So don't think for a second that he is the only one that make you that can make you feel the way that he made you feel. You will fall in love with somebody else. And I don't think it'll take too long well good luck anonymous now uh the next email is from bryant dear dj envy i wanted to start by saying i love the podcast you and gear's chemistry connection is everything i want for me and my future wife so i've been seeing a woman for three months two months courting with sexual intimacy we fucked the first night we met and one month exclusive her idea it was her idea to go to the next level everything is super scary good we have a lot in common to likes and dislikes to movies and food. She hates sweet potatoes and I can't fucking stand sweet potatoes. <laughs> Let's get married. Even the stuff <laughs> even the stuff that matters. For example, we both uh, agree instead of a big wedding, we just want to hit up a town hall, get the certificate and have a reception at the house and invite whoever we want. Not saying we're getting married, but that's our view on weddings in general. And we can spend the money on uh, a vicious honeymoon. We are super in sync except for minor shit. So here's what shit. And this is where shit gets weird. We became ex- an exclusive. We became exclusive. Excuse me. Again, her idea. Now, all of a sudden, she feels like she's rushed into this relationship. I confess my love first. And later, she said it back. Now, she says she doesn't. She was just caught in the moment. I don't know what to do or mm-hmm. where this is coming from. I asked if there was an ex or another man involved. No, I wasn't mad or resentful when I asked. She said no. Just that she enjoys being my girlfriend, but the title is what intimidates her. It sounds like she's using this as an exit strategy or wants to fuck or have a girlfriend benefits, but not being exclusive or tied down. I don't know if I'm thinking too much into this or should I just be with it? I don't want to miss out on a good thing, but at the same time, I don't want to play myself. I've given her money to help move out of a situation with an apartment. We buy each other gifts. Everything is good. So why would she want to take a step back in my book? Please, I need an honest opinion from our two relationship gurus. <laughs> Sincerely, Bryant. P.S. I don't give a fuck who's listening. You can say my name. Laugh out loud. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I feel like maybe she got scared. You know, maybe things move too fast. Maybe in previous relationships, things might have moved too fast and it didn't work out right. Maybe she's really just enjoying you, bro, and, and don't want to fuck it up. You know, maybe she's like, you know, I don't want to go too fast and push too hard maybe i just want to take one step at a time i mean you guys only been together how long three months three months Mm -hmm. i mean you got a long time to go bro like you might be pushing a little too hard yeah just didn't you hear he said again right on her urging they're exclusive because of her urging right but he maybe she did it and says you know what this you know and a lot of this could be her friends you know a lot of this could be her mom say like you're jumping into this too fast slow down and she's now looking back and say you know i want to take a step back and i just want to slow things down a little bit and that's what i would do i would allow things to slow down a little bit and i would just keep an eye open you know see where she's at you know make sure she's not using you and slow things down and just slow the relationship down you're still boyfriend and girlfriend huh they buy each other gifts right didn't seem like a using situation from the email right so she might just be a little scared that things are moving too fast and going too fast and she's not really getting a chance to enjoy it and really a chance to really take everything in and i don't see a problem with that um hmm you know it might be too good he said that they're basically in sync with everything they're probably spending a lot of time together and it may just be overwhelming for her you know for most girls you know they would be in heaven i mean i think that i would enjoy that you know being in a new, if i were single you know being in a new relation being in a new relationship uh-huh. and spending a lot of time with somebody and if we have similar hobbies and interests likes dislikes everything but 
in three months, they already shared I love yous, mm-hmm. which I think can be normal, but she retracted hers. And they're already talking about what their idea of a wedding may be. You know, things like that don't only scare men, it can scare women as well. Right. So it can be that, or it's possible that sometimes you have similar likes and dislikes, similar hobbies and interests as pe- with people that you look at as friends. Right. She may have, at the end of these three months, possibly realized that her feelings for you may fall more so in the realm of friendship than in relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a possibility. You know, you don't just take back and I love you. You know, you may have done something really special for her that day or made her feel very special that day. Or you guys might have had fun or something where, you know, she might have been caught in a moment of euphoria or happiness or something that made her say, I love you. Right. You know, and maybe upon reflecting (laughs) on it. She realized that she might have spoken too soon or been too hasty about right. saying it. Mm-hmm. But the fact that she took took that back, that says a lot to me. Right. Um I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe, you know, it was it was lust and she just said it because she was in a in a moment and then she really thought about it and said, I don't feel that way. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, it's not like you guys been together for five years and now she's saying I really didn't love you. You only been together for two, three months, you know? So the fact that she's saying that she's being honest is a great thing. You want people to be honest, you know? You can't say, I want people to be honest, and then when they're honest, you get mad at that. That doesn't work in a relationship. If you really want the person to be honest and they are honest, you have to deal with their honesty, and you can't be mad at their honesty. Um, you don't follow <laughs> that, that, that philosophy. But I never said I want... <laughs> I'm just saying. No, but I, it's funny for me to sit here and hear you say that. <laughs> like, no, but see, sometimes this, you'll be honest with me about something, and I'll respond, and then you'll respond to me by saying, "What? Like, I thought you wanted me to be honest." And I said, "Yes." I'll, I'll say, "Well, yes," and I'm honestly responding to your honesty. So right. we're both being honest, right? No, but sometimes I feel like, I mean. I'm a type of person where sometimes I don't want honesty. I know this about you. You're, you know, very, you're very unique in and, that. And it's not the fact that I don't want honesty. Is I don't necessarily want to hear your opinion on certain things. Ah! It's the truth. Ah! I don't want to hear your opinion on certain things when I know what I'm doing is wrong. Wait, I, what? Let's say it's something about the way I'm treating somebody, right? Okay. Let's say it's the way I'm treating somebody. I won't ask you your opinion because I know what I'm doing wrong. Okay. So I don't want your opinion. I don't want your honest opinion on it. Don't give me opinion at all because I know what I'm doing is wrong. Like for instance, if <laughs> so, so, wait, 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 wait. um, so I know that what I'm doing is wrong. Let me just live out my wrong dreams and all of its like splendor. That's what you're saying. Like don't cry. Like I don't want to be right. Right, I, I want to be wrong. I don't want to. That's be, my goal. Right, right. I, absolutely. Let me just bask in all of this wrongness. Right. If if word. Let's say something. Let's say I'm treating somebody wrong that I'm working with. Let's just say I don't know. Um, and I know it's wrong, but I'm being petty because I want to have a petty party. That's me. I know what I'm doing wrong. So when you, so if I don't ask you about it, and then you start to tell me about it, and I'm like, nah, don't worry about it, and you continue, I know what I'm doing wrong. I don't want your opinion because I already know what I'm doing wrong. I'm doing this because of me. That's just who I am as a person. I don't know why or why I'm like that. That's just me. And people are probably listening like that doesn't make sense. But yeah, that does in my mind. You're you're different. You know, so she's being honest. She is being brutally honest and say, hey, I don't know if I love you, bro. That time I said it, I was nothing. You know, so I said it (laughs) during orgasm. You know, during orgasm, everybody loves everybody. Is that right? Right. I mean, is that that's true? what you say. Is that true? I love you more when I nut. <laughs> it's the truth. I love you more when I nut. See? Too. So, I mean, 
<laughs> she orgasmed and she said I love you and now she really thought about it when she was an orgasm and say damn maybe I don't really love her maybe I'm just infatuated maybe it's just lust so, or maybe it was just a good day yeah, you know maybe, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be tied into sex or well maybe you were, maybe nature. you were a great fuck I mean you, you don't know what it I is. just said it doesn't have to be tied into sex it could have just been a good day Right, but I, I think it was probably related <laughs> to sex. But you know, you can't be mad at that. She's being honest uh, with you, and if she's being honest with you, you say okay. You keep an eye out and and continue on with the relationship. Right. So what this boils down to for me is that you stay the course. She told you how she feels, and you said that you don't want to miss out on a good girl or a good thing. I think is how he put it. Right. right. So don't miss out on a good girl and a good thing. See what the chorus has in store for you. Right. I agree with that. Stick with her and, you know, just watch things, you know, keep a watchful eye on the relationship and look out for cues that might lead you in the right direction so that you can kind of discern for yourself. Well, does this feel more so like a friendship or am I getting that vibe from her that that's how she's looking at me or you know was I just moving too fast or or were we as a unit just moving too fast so maybe we should take things slow take cues from her and then you'll start it'll start to explain itself to you for you right absolutely all right let's get into this last email uh call me maria or marie in any way you want to look at it no well she's telling you what to call her so what does it say m-a-r-i-e Marie. All right. <laughs> oh, she so. tells you what to call her. You're will, like, or how, however you want to say it. <laughs> Hello, Gia and Envy. I just got into this podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I love it. Just call me Marie. <laughs> okay, so me and my boyfriend are having some issues in our relationships. The main issue, I call it the grudge. So back in April 2015, he was looking through my phone middle of the night. He woke me up with a picture of my ex in my email that the ex mom sent me. And I was half asleep, so I told him he was a brother of my friend, not knowing my boyfriend (laughs) already knew what my ex looked like. So he asked me Uh again later that day who it was, and I said the same at this time. I should have just told the truth. Of course you should have. But I didn't want him to know it was my ex. If it matters, it was a regular picture of him with his son. Anyway, so I lied and got caught told the truth and cut ties with the ex-family member per his request he told me if i wanted him to stay i would have to never go to where he lives which is connecticut out of state mind you i used to go to you just can't go to connecticut at all i like that though i used to go (laughs) every other weekend to visit my goddaughter and best friend who lived there and i also have family in connecticut so i agreed to only go with him so he'll feel good about it after a couple of times going together he didn't want to go anymore um let me see so he decided okay so he decided he doesn't want to go anymore he decided this about september 20,000 20,000 september 2016 we've already had our daughter by this time wait hold on hold on he decided that he doesn't he, want to he go doesn't to want to go to connecticut, connecticut no ever so again right so i'm she just can't not go. going to connecticut ever right. again okay so now the problem is that he doesn't want me to visit my best friend and goddaughter on some weekends or even go visit another friend that lives in Jersey. He keeps saying he doesn't trust me to go out of state. It's now October 2017. It's been three years since that happened, (laughs) and I haven't done anything not to go out to clubs, no girls' night out, no go visit friends or nothing. I want to visit my friends. What should I do? All because of that little itty-bitty lie? Sincerely caged bird. (laughs) All because of that little itty bitty lie. I mean, she shouldn't have lied. Right? We can agree. She should not have lied because when you tell a lie, especially when it has something to do with an ex, a member of the opposite sex, or anything that looks suspicious, that tells the person that you are not trustworthy. Right. No, I get you it. cannot be trusted because but, given the opportunity, you are capable of lying. But I understand why she lied. You know, that picture. Leave might, it up to you to understand why she lied. No, see, I understand. See, because people don't like to, to argue. 
And there's people that do like to argue. For instance, you are. I was just about to say, you trying to throw a shot over here? No, I'm, I'll be honest. You are a lawyer and you are a judge. You like to do everything in, in court. So to have a conversation or argument or disagreement with you, you have to really be focused. Like you have to take notes and nobody wants to take notes. <laughs> For sure, you sound That's so how you are. So ridiculous. So you ask a question and somebody will say a question and then four hours later, you'd be like, so tell me what happened again. And you're like, I told you already. No, tell me again. And then you, you're you trying to remember what you said and then you start talking and you'd be like, no, you didn't say that before. I don't want a dissertation. So for her, she was probably like, shit, somebody sent me this picture. I didn't erase it. I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't even thinking about my ex like that. Somebody just sent me the picture. Do I just say it's my family member's friend? Do I just lie? And it's over? Or do I say, okay, that's my ex. Now I got to explain why my ex's phone is in this and he doesn't trust me. We got to go through this whole long thing when it really doesn't wasn't have that to be a whole long thing. It's always thing. a whole long thing. It doesn't have to be a whole long thing. She knows and you know what? better than anybody and else. And you know what? Better it be a whole long thing in the middle of the night, even if it took three hours to explain and to get him calm and feeling good about the situation, back to bed, up in the morning, and her being able to go to Connecticut whenever the hell she feels like. Instead, because she lied in a situation where she should have told the truth, she's spent the next three years as a caged bird don't you understand she would have been a caged bird anyway because now that she got that picture no yes absolutely it was sent by her ex's mother did i get that right yep by her ex's mother i'm sure it was through an email as she didn't say for some reason i pictured that it was an email i'm sure that there's a way to prove that it came from the ex's mother i am sure i am sure (laughs) That he would have still caged her regardless. Is at a point because she was she probably there was probably an email and to see the picture she probably saved it on her phone so she could look at it and she just never erased it because she really wasn't thinking about it. So you have to explain to him. So you're just gonna make that up. I'm so not, you can make your point. No, it's not about making. She didn't a point. say that. It's not about. We gotta work with the facts. It's not about making a point, but she probably just screenshotted and that's probably what he she, saw. She's gonna. Are be, you just gonna? Are you just gonna make that up? She's gonna be just ca- make that up. She's gonna be a cage bird regardless because no. he's like the type that's mad anyway. No, she did not say. You know, I'm with a boyfriend that's possessive and controlling and I've never been able to go out and hang out with my girlfriends and do this. She specifically started her email with that situation, which leads me to believe that everything that came after that situation was fruits of the poisonous tree. So it was that night that dictated how these last three years played out she does she's not quote unquote allowed to go out with her friends or have girls nights or anything she's not able to go to a whole state because her ex lives there i mean don't get me wrong i think he's taking it too far but it all was born and bred out of a lie and when you lie to someone the person being lied to is looking at you especially if they love you You know, some people are just like, well, I can't trust you. I'm just going to let you go. But if they love you, they more so look at you like I love you and I can't trust you. So I now I have to control you. Right. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's acting out. Now, don't get me wrong. I think he's a little, you know, he's a little, you know, Mm -hmm. off the chains with how he's handling it. But I think that that's the reason why. And I'm saying that it could have been avoided. I, but you know, you know me, I think that it is always important to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just have a thing about honesty and you know, you're an honest person. I'm an honest person, but you'll make an excuse for say a white lie or, you know, you'll express understanding about why someone lies. Right. And not to say that at times it's not understandable, but for me, I think it's so important for people to always lead with honesty. And you know, like in our relationship, no matter what, I don't care how much it hurts you. I don't care what my words, 
even if my words are going to be destructive, I would rather tell you the truth and deal with the fallout right there and then than to lie. Because you, you know, we went through a point um, and this was, let's see, I mean, this was a long time ago. We went through a point maybe 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. nine years ago, where you would lie about little small things and it had me questioning everything that you said right i remember like in particular um there was this light that kept flickering in the hallway and it was in our last house that's how i know how long ago it was um it was flickering in the hallway and for about a week i would ask you to change the bulb and you kept telling me that you were going to do it and then one day I was in the city and you were home and I said, babe, did you change the bulb? And you were like, yeah, I already changed it. Clearly because you just wanted me to get off of your back. But you told me that you already changed it. And then I got home and it was the same freaking flicking bulb, you know, shining all over the hallway. And I was I just remember sitting there like he straight lied to me. Right. Like, he just lied to me, told me he changed it, but he didn't. Now, and this kind of goes back to, you know, something that, you know, we were talking about earlier. It's something so small and insignificant. You know, it's a 99 cent bulb. Right. But the fact that you told me that you did it when you didn't just made me feel like you're capable of telling me little lies if it makes your life a little bit easier. So... Because you didn't want to hear me, quote unquote, bitch about the bulb, you just told me what I wanted to hear. And I know to you, it was like, oh, no biggie. I'm about to change it in 10 minutes. You probably got sidetracked, right. didn't do it. And now I'm looking at you like a liar. Correct. And that was damaging. Something small like that for me in that moment, it was damaging to our relationship because I was just looking at it like given an opportunity where he may not want to deal with the fallout, he'll just tell a little white lie because it makes his life easier. And I think that's, you know, you're relating to your older mentality when it comes to this email, you know, saying, all right, well, she just told that lie because bitch probably just wanted to go back to sleep. That's not okay. Right. I get it. Don't lie don't tell little lies don't tell medium lies don't tell big lies don't lie because once you lie to me i i don't want to curse but i'm trying to figure out a different way to say it but to express how i feel about it well hell i'm just gonna curse you fuck everything up right you know like once you lie to me Everything gets ruined because right, right, right. now I'm looking at you like a different person and I know what you're capable of. Gotcha. And I agree. You know, you're right. You, you shouldn't lie. And, and that was just the, the main problem. But back to. The of first, course, back to the person. <laughs> I mean, that's where it comes from. You don't ever want to see. And that's another problem with you. Your avoidance. You always want to avoid things. No, I don't want to avoid things. Yes, you do. No, no I don't. I, I said I agree. You're right. That that ends the conversation. Like, I, yes, I said you're right. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sensing a little bit of feelings right now. No, it's not. Oh, yes, yes, if you say, yes. Oh, listen to you. I, I can hear it in your voice. And you say it's Am right. I, I, it's like, did, what, I, did I tap a nerve? No, it's like, what, what else do you want? I said, you're look, right. Look at you. I know, it, it's the truth. I said, look what, at I you. said, you're right. So we continue on. We don't have to harp on the fact that you're right. I said, you're right. So why are we harping on it? We continue, we move it, on. Rashawn. That's forward motion. Oh, this is about forward motion? No, that's, that's so how your tone. So your tone is about forward motion? No, I said, you're right. I don't think so. I said, you're right. Let's go back to the email. Is there something else that you want to address? Nope, there's nothing else I want to address. Just note taken. That's oh, all. Okay, I said that you were right. You should no, because I don't. I don't hear that that sweetness in your voice right now. It's, Wondering it's, what that's about. It's always been in my voice. No, it's not. You sound a little harsh and hostile. No, Just a little bit. I sense it. I hear it. No. Little, you're not. You're not nice, sweet, adorable, loving, Rashawn. That's just about you know having the conversation for the sake of conversation and sharing. No, I just said that you were right. There was. There's nothing else to converse about. I said you're right. So I said let's get back. See, to See now email. you sound a little bit more sweet and delicate. I sound exactly how I sounded before. No, you don't. Email me. DM me and let me know if he sounds the same way that he sounded before. 
Now to to get back to the girl on the email, I would just tell her to, you know, you guys have to have a conversation. I mean, he can't keep you locked up in your cage and locked up in the house forever. It can't be one of those things where you gotta, you know, if that's the case, then you're R. Kelly and he's R. Kelly and you're the girl and he won't let you out. You know, it has to be a situation where you guys have to have a conversation. And if it's been, you know, I think you said like five years at this point that you got to forgive each other and continue to move on. What do you think? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to get up out of here. Now, uh, if you have a question or comment, you can always email us at the crew at gmail.com. That's T H E E K C crew at gmail.com. All right. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the KC Crew. Toodles. Toodles.